Welcome to minerals, crystals, and gemstones. Oh my, my favorite thing. <laughs> Do you know if a diamond is a mineral, a crystal, or a gem? In this video, you'll learn to classify treasures of the earth into these special categories. Ready to get crystal clear? Let's go! Before watching this video, it's a good idea to watch the videos called The Rock Cycle and Rocks to learn how rocks are formed and classified, then come back to this one. From the Rock Cycle video, you learn that rocks are formed in different ways. Some form by a liquid solidifying, some by layering, and some by being pressured together. But do you know what really makes up a rock? Rocks are mixtures of minerals, and minerals form crystals. Every mineral has its very own special crystal formation. But what is a mineral? And what is a crystal? Geologists, scientists who study the earth, agree that a substance must meet all five of these to be considered a mineral. It must be naturally occurring, solid, inorganic, a fixed chemical formula, an ordered crystalline structure. Let's look at what each item means. Naturally occurring means that it is not made by a person. A table is not naturally occurring because it is constructed by a person. But the wood used to make the table is naturally occurring because it comes from nature. Does this wood make a mineral though? Not so fast. Remember that a substance needs to meet all five criteria. Solid means that it is not a liquid or a gas when it is at room temperature. Wood is a solid, water is a liquid, and air is a mixture of gases. Can wood be a mineral now? Not yet. We haven't looked at the next three items on the list. Inorganic means that the substance is not made by an organism or a living thing. Wood is made from a tree, and a tree is an organism and living thing. Oh, oh, okay, so wood is definitely not a mineral. Now we get into a little chemistry. Having a fixed chemical formula means that the mineral has the same chemical makeup each time. For example, the mineral quartz is made up of silicon and oxygen atoms. Atoms are the basic tiny particles that make up all matter. When atoms join together, they can become molecules, but atoms cannot be divided into smaller parts. So every time that silicon and oxygen atoms combine in this form, which is a fancy chemistry formula showing one atom of silicon and two atoms of oxygen, it is considered to be quartz. And finally, having an ordered crystalline structure means that the atoms that make up the mineral have a pattern. Don't worry if the chemistry of minerals sounds confusing to you. You can still enjoy rocks and their minerals by how they look and feel. Let's study minerals in more detail. Because there are over 3,000 types of minerals, it's really important to organize them into categories so that we can keep track of all of them. There are eight common groups of minerals. Native elements, sulfides, oxides, phosphates, sulfates, carbonates, halides, and silicates. Whereas most minerals are made up of several chemical elements, Minerals considered to be native elements are those in the purest form, with only one element. Copper, iron, lead, and graphite are considered to be native elements and are very commonly found. Gold, platinum, and silver are considered to be rare native elements, which is why they are expensive to buy. Not all native elements are metals, however. Sulfur and carbon are examples of non-metallic native elements. Sulfides are made of sulfur plus another mineral, usually a metal. Minerals in this group are known to be heavy, brittle, and metallic looking. Pyrite is a sulfide because it is made of sulfur and iron. <laughs> it is often called fool's gold because it looks a lot like gold. Other sulfides are galena, cinnabar, and stibnite. Oxides are minerals combining metal and oxygen. Hematite is often used in making jewelry and is also really great for meditation. Other oxides are magnetite, cuprite, and corundum. Phosphates are minerals made with phosphorus and oxygen. There are actually over 200 phosphates, but the most common ones are turquoise and apatite. 
Phosphate minerals are often used for fertilizer, but also preservatives in food and cosmetics. Sulfates are made of sulfur plus oxygen and metal. It is a soft mineral and often translucent, which means it allows light through it even if we can't see through it clearly like glass. Some examples of sulfates are gypsum, barite, selenite, celestite, and anhydrite. Carbonates are a combination of carbon, oxygen, and metal. Examples are calcite, rhodochrosite, and malachite. This group of minerals is so soft that they dissolve with mild acids like vinegar. Halides are made by combining metal and one of these elements, chlorine, bromine, fluorine, iodine, or astenine, some of which dissolve in water. Halite, a rock salt, is one example. Can you guess what halite is used to make? That's right, table salt. Fluorite and sylvite are other examples of halides. And finally, silicates, which is the largest group of minerals, are made of oxygen and silicon. Quartz is the most common in this category, but so is amazonite, muscovite, mica, and of course silicon. Other minerals in this category are biotite, labradorite, talc, and olivine. Rocks are made of minerals, and minerals crystallize. When lava from a volcano cools, the liquid particles come together and harden, creating a chemical bond. Crystals begin to grow. This means that the makeup or atoms and molecules of these minerals are organized in a special way, a repeating pattern. Crystals don't only form from lava, however. They often form from a liquid when it starts to harden. Ice is an example of a crystal that forms when a liquid hardens. But another way crystals form is when a water evaporates from a mixture, like salt water. When salt water evaporates, it makes salt crystals. <laughs> Some other large crystals that you can see with the eye are diamonds and snowflakes. Snowflakes are crystals that form when water freezes. I bet you didn't know that many computer screens are made with liquid crystals. Each type of crystal has a different shape or color. Crystals can be cubic with a square structure like diamonds, hexagonal with a six-sided structure like emeralds, trigonal with a triangular structure like quartz, monoclinic, which has a parallelogram structure like azurite, orthoembonic, based on a rhombus or diamond shape like celestite, tetragonal, which has a rectangular structure like zircon, and triclinic, which have random shapes like labradorite. And as you can see, crystals can also be blue or purple or green or yellow or black or a combination of so many colors. Just like everything in science, there are some exceptions to the classification rules. For example, from the rocks video, you learn that coal is a sedimentary rock and it's made with plant particles or organic substances. It is also considered a mineral, even if the rule of a mineral is made from inorganic substances. Geologists don't agree on the classification of coal, so you might see it classified as both a rock and a mineral. There are other tricky classifications that you may find as you study rocks and minerals more closely. For instance, how would you classify salt and sugar? Salt is considered to be a mineral, as we saw earlier, but sugar is not. How can that be when they are so similar? Remember that in order to be a mineral, the substance cannot be made from a living organism. Since sugar is made from plants, sugar canes and sugar beets, it is not a mineral even if it has crystals. When a crystal is so beautiful it can be cut and polished, it is called a gemstone, or gem for short. Gems come in a variety of beautiful colors, shapes, and textures, and they are often used to make jewelry. Diamonds, emeralds, rubies, and sapphires are examples of popular gemstones used for jewelry. Some other crystals that are often turned into gemstones are amethyst, amber, opal, pearl, topaz, citrine, tiger's eye, amazonite, 
tanzanite, agate, and sodalite. You have learned that rocks are made of cr minerals, minerals crystallize, and when polished, crystals can become gemstones. Wow! Crystals and gemstones are so beautiful that many people like to collect them. Maybe you would like to start with your own collection. Or you can even try growing some of your own crystals, such as bismuth crystals. But first, apply all this knowledge by playing our fun online games and quizzes. And remember to always be clever. Okay, speaking of personal collections, I didn't bring all of mine today, but I thought I would share a few of my favorites. So, first we have selenite. Now this quartz is a natural cut of quartz. Now you can get a thing called a tumbler at home, or you can have different shapes of the crystal. So this one has been shaped and polished. So a tumbler is a very fun thing to do at home when you start out with a bunch of raw rocks and then it goes through the tumbler and makes them smooth and shiny. Next we have fluorite. So this one is a lot like amethyst, but it's actually fluorite. Yeah, it's a fun one, little cube cut. But no matter what your collection does, just remember to always be clever and have fun. <laughs>